joining us live at the Project Star launch. Again, the Project Star, I absolutely love their um, call to action. It is shifting mindsets towards community transformation and renewal. Um, and I want you guys to be a part of Bridge Nation Irie Jam Radio family. Be a part of the conversation. Let us know what your thoughts are, what your feelings are. Any questions that you may want to ask, you can do that at 876 Five five one five seven eight seven. That's eight seven six five five one five seven eight seven. And if memory serves me correctly, the website to be a part of the Project Star is projectstarja.com. Now I am joined by. <clears throat> One of the Bridge um, 99 FM directors, Mr. Clyde McKenzie. He wears a lot of hats in the um, um, in this space. He's a show show commentator, an analyst of many things. Um, tonight we're talking about transformation and mindset, and specifically, Clyde. I want to talk about the entertainment industry. You're well versed on that. Um, does the entertainment industry have a role to play in the transformation of mindset of Jamaica? Well, I'm happy to be here, Sin. I would say that the entertainment sector has a number of roles to play in the transformation of our society. First of all, entertainment has a critical role in terms of messaging. Uh, how we fashion the messages for the, the broader populace is very, very important. And so um, you have to have that synergy between what we intend to achieve as a society and what is reflected in the music and the arts. So from that standpoint, culture plays a significant role. But also... Ex Excellent. Let's, let, let, let's segue. Um, with so many different initiatives out there, so much different values and attitudes programs out there that have failed, do you think that this is a feasible initiative? Well, the fact is, it is one of the most effective means of communicating with people through music. Uh, we, we've, we've seen what has been done with Sesame Street. Uh, people have come and they have recognized, for example, that you can use dance hall in the instruction of mathematics um, and hip hop to really foster certain values. Of course, these things can't be done in abstraction. And they can't be done in a vacuum. There are certain preconditions that have to be there in order for those things to become reality. What are the preconditions? Well, you've got to have the kind of social intervention sometimes that will facilitate these things. So, for example, you can't have an argument about teaching people mathematics without first creating the conditions for them to go to school. Yeah getting good teachers, important. all of those things are very important. Yeah. And of course, the training of these people who are going to deliver the content is very important. Mm -hmm. So you have to have the infrastructure first. And when you satisfy that critical need, then you can talk about how you process the messaging and how you design the messaging. Let, let's, let's look to the education, the educational system. Um, I believe that we need to be looking there to, to begin this transformation, Inst instilling char core values, character values into um, our primary and basic students. Do you, do you think that we should start there? And in the families, in the homes, even before they begin school? Well, you have to start from the beginning. Mm -hmm. And one of the places to start is in infancy. But the thing is, I think we have really misunderstood certain things. Mm -hmm. Our children don't pattern what we are. They pattern who we are. Yeah. And what and they see. It's, it's, it's very important that we understand this. So a lot of times we are delivering message, messages which are at variance with our practices. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if we do not act in a manner that is consistent with the messaging that we're giving, mm -hmm. then what we're creating is, is, is confusion and dissonance mm -hmm. in the minds of the children. Mm -hmm. So we have to be able to sit down and live in a way that demonstrates what we are teaching and preaching. 
Some say that, that, the, that we have a generation loss, maybe two generations, more few generations lost. If the generations are so lost, right, how do we, how do we get, get them to teach us any behavior? Well, you have to start one person at a time, you know, in the sense that it, it will have to be that we as individuals recognize the importance of what we do and um, perhaps not look to the collective kind mm -hmm, of effort. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's going to be important, mm -hmm. but collective efforts are usually the function of individuals mm -hmm. committing to a cause. Mm -hmm. And therefore, we can't depend on these mass approaches to things. That might be important and that might be one layer. Mm -hmm. But critically, what we have to do is to deal with it on an individual and a personal level. And that, that, that comes with how we grow, grow our children, how we, how, what we teach them, and, 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 and the values we set for them. What, off past this launch, what impact would you like to see Project Star have on Jamaica? Well, going back to the, the question of instilling values, one of the things that we have to do is we have to do make we see. In other words, we can't just talk, yeah. tell people about how they should behave mm -hmm. without demonstrating mm -hmm. the behavior that we desire. Mm -hmm. And until we can do that, then we're going to have a problem. So the first thing that we're going to have to do is we're going to have to teach by example. Yeah. And if, if, project, if this project can do that, mm -hmm. then we're on our way to something. Yeah. Of course, there's, there's also going to be the importance of teaching pride, of, 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 of showing people how to understand their value. Because a lot of people in this society, they equate everything with price. Mm -hmm. So they know the price of everything and the value of nothing. Yeah. And, 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 and it's important that we understand that people have value and we should teach them mm -hmm. that they have value, even sometimes without money, without power, without fame. How, 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 will we, how will we teach them and who are the teachers? Well, they, it's the examples that the, the, the elite in the society hmm. are, are, are going to set. So, for example, you know, if, you, if you're teaching people that they need to live within their means and be content with what they have while at the same time being ambitious, mm -hmm. you have to show and live those examples. Because one of the things that, w that is happening is that in our society, we are making a lot of people feel as if they don't belong or they're not somebody right. because they don't have. Right. There's a, there's a, you said the elite. There's a, there's a very big divide there. I, I'm not, I, I need you to kind of close it up for when, me. when I say elite, I'm talking about the, the, the people, the influencers, the people who have power and influence in the society. Mm. You see, these are the people who, who, who um, have the capacity to shape values, but they can't do so if they don't do it by example. You know, just preaching to people will not help. And what are some, what are some, of, the, what are, what are some of the values that you would like to see come out of this? What, are the, what does the example look like? Set the tone for us. Well, I mean, I would like to see Jamaicans respecting themselves more because I think it is because we do not attach enough value to ourselves and henceforth to our fellow Jamaicans why we have this runaway crime statistic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, if we really had a genuine appreciation of each other as Jamaicans and as us and, and, and see yeah. value in ourselves mm -hmm. yeah. and say this, yeah. this person yeah. is a reflection of me yeah. then that, 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 that is when that is when you will refrain from doing certain kinds of things yeah. now we also have to be careful how we for commercial mm -hmm. purposes mm -hmm. uh, encourage crass materialism mm -hmm. because I think that is part of the problem in a society where we, we have encouraged materialism mm -hmm. without being able to satisfy yep. the desire for these things, yep. what you create are the conditions for, for, for the rampant crime and violence that we, that, that we see. Yep. And so you have to look at how do you moderate that without letting people mm -hmm. lose ambition because somebody should be ambitious and want, want the best, but they should also 
be in a position to understand that if I don't have the best today, I should work towards it. But but how? But how? But how, but how? Because because we're talking about having ambition, and then uh, with that ambition, we're talking about persons instead of going out to look for work, we've now turned to. What is this word I hear? This this chopping or this lottery scamming? This quick money? Well, how do we ensure that 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 is not? We're looking at actually going out to get jobs to, to to do things legally. Well, if you if you are going to attach importance to somebody because they're able to buy a bottle of Ace of Spades, hmm. then what you are in point of fact saying is that if I cannot buy that bottle of champagne, then I am I'm nobody. And once you have this kind of mindset and you start engendering this kind of thinking, then you have created the conditions for the chopping and, and all the other things that you are talking about. Mm -hmm. Now, what we have to do is we have to have a situation in which people take pride in doing work that is noble that is decent yeah. we have to engender that and part to. of that is going Very to be important. is also going to be how we treat the people who work for us yes because a lot of people yes. are turned off from very important yes and believe that boy them go have to do them things yep. on them own because the people they work for do not treat them in yeah. a way that makes them feel yeah um yeah, value. Value. yeah. and if, yeah. You, if you if you if you don't do that what you're doing is you are turning people away yes. from doing yes. honest and decent work. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Duncan spoke about using spiritual um, leaders, um, going into communities and using the community leaders or champions, as they said, to um, affect this this change and 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 to police and to really um, help turn and shift their mindsets in the community. Do you think that that's a great approach, and it will work? It has to be an interdenominational, a kind of ecumenical approach. One of the things and one of the problems with our churches is that they are technically very divisive. Mm. And that is one of the source of the problems in our society. Mm -hmm. And therefore, if you don't have people, I mean, a, a Martin Luther King, he was a religious person, mm -hmm. but he was not somebody who was confined to a particular doctrine right, or was right. identified his, his 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 appeal was broad because the issues he was dealing with were not considered to, denom to be denominational right. i mean the, the same with mahatma gandhi yeah. these people are religious people mm -hmm. but they would not be considered denominational leaders mm -hmm. in other words their messaging runs across denominations mm -hmm. and what you have to do you have to have leaders from this, the, the spiritual yeah. uh, realm then who are able to speak to the widest cross-section of, 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 of issues and, and to personalities mm -hmm. because if you're going to have a man who is going to be identified only as an Anglican man or a Catholic or an or a Adventist that's not going to work no. Martin Luther King as I said didn't wasn't appealing because he was Baptist. Most right. people didn't even know him as a Baptist leader. Yeah. They just knew him That's as somebody true. who was speaking the truth. Yes. Now, as we speak to um, the, the bridge, as we're broadcasting live here on the bridge, we're also broadcasting live um, on Irie Jam Radio. You know that the bridge is purpose to keep the Caribbean connected, Jamaicans in the diaspora and locally connected. How important is the diaspora? What part do they play in Project Star and in shifting the mindset and the transformation? The diaspora plays such an important role that it can't be overstated. The, the diaspora represents Jamaicans abroad. And um, to me, it is really just an extension of the nation, yeah. Jamaica. Um, we, we see, for example, the role that the diaspora plays in terms of the Jamaican economy. Yeah. Um, yeah. their, their earning potential as Jamaicans resident abroad and what they, what they are able to contribute to the Jamaican economy is significant. Now, there are other important things that they can do. For example, the, the music industry that we like to reference so often, it wouldn't have had the kind of international appeal that it does without the diaspora. I mean, the music spread to Britain because of Jamaicans going there yeah. and wanting the music from Jamaica there. 
and, and, and it happens everywhere. The food, everything, it, it spreads. So, so, so the, the diaspora is a vector to transmit and, uh, and deliver our cultural values and everything across the world. So th th that's big. Now, they're also able to influence the polity and politics here um, because of their, 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 their financial influence, for one. Yeah. I mean, they're responsible for the welfare of a lot of people here. here yes, and so they, 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 they have a certain level of influence, yeah. which I think is, 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 is something that might need to be recruited in terms of dealing with some of the problems here. And I think that when the people in the diaspora speak, they, there is a certain level of authority yeah. with which they speak. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and they can, you know, they've seen best practices abroad and all of that. They can help in shaping mm -hmm. some of the things that are happening here, you know? As we talk about um, influencing and um, things of those sorts, social media has played a big part in the diaspora. We talk about the diaspora in the narrative that's going out about Jamaica. And the, the, nar the narrative is not so positive because everybody's quick to videotape and show the negative and stuff. How are we going to, with Project Star, shift the narrative? through social media, or all medias for that matter? The narrative is driven on two levels. The na narrative is driven on the level of the reality, and the, nar the, 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 the the narrative is also driven from aspiration. Mm -hmm. So, and, and, and really what we call m national mythologies. Um, the United States has certain mythologies about itself, which has help to keep it together. Mm -hmm. I mean, nations do have these mythologies. Mm -hmm. um, what, what happens is when the, 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 the realities start to veer too widely yeah, yeah. from the mythology, yeah. um, that's when you have a problem. And so we have to not only talk about what is happening, but what can and should happen, mm -hmm. given all the potential that Jamaica has, mm -hmm. we have to use social media maybe more productively yeah. less for gossiping yeah. more for teaching and learning purposes yeah. and, and 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 messaging purposes mm -hmm. to 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 mobilize mm -hmm. so we, we might need to use social media to mobilize the diaspora to these national causes so project like this should be something that is how how quickly attracting how quickly is what you're referencing be done it can be done fairly quickly. The impact um, of it might take some time mm -hmm. to see. But I think, I think you can start very early. And sometimes you see campaigns, you know, mm -hmm. um, and you say, boy, this is going to take an eternity. I mean, mm -hmm. you see people's attitudes and how they shift. For example, I remember when, when we were trying to teach people that they should wear a seatbelt. Yeah. And, <laughs> it took so long. Yeah. No, I, something what, like that you think wouldn't take long. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But then, but then what happened is that the behavior changed. Yeah. Really. Mm -hmm. um, so we can change behavior. Yeah. Um, if if sometimes we can't change attitudes. Yeah. I mean, Martin Luther King said you can you can regulate um, behavior by laws, but mm -hmm. you can't do that. Mm -hmm. You can't regulate attitudes. Mm -hmm. But you can't. You one of the things you have to do is I think you can with constant teaching, framing, how oh, you frame the messaging yeah. is very important. As you talk about law, um, JCF will be key partners in this project. Um, and, uh, you know, the elephant in the room is that you really can't trust the police force. How, how do we shift that conversation? How do, we, how do we instill hope or trust in the communities with the police? Well, again, as we, we were discussing, it's narrative. Mm -hmm. And what happens, you know, interestingly, sometimes reality is at variance with the narrative. Mm -hmm. And what happens is that things might happen which might seem to fit the narrative, mm -hmm. 
but really the narrative wasn't true in the, in, 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 the, in, the, in the very first instance. Yeah. But people see these things through that particular prism yeah. because that's a prevailing narrative. Mm -hmm. So we have to, if we shift some of the things, but that has to be gradual. Yeah. And you start, what you start doing now is highlighting mm -hmm. positive things mm -hmm. that are being done by the police in terms of what is happening in, in, in because it is the stories that we tell yeah. which determine what we see yeah. in ourselves. Yeah. So if you start telling positive stories and people start seeing positive things, now yeah. you don't want to talk about things yeah. that don't exist, yeah. but yeah. talk about things that are yeah. reality. Yeah. And you start highlighting them. As that, it, is, that, is, that is one way of starting. As you talk about sharing stories, let's talk about the media's part in all of this. Coming together. Do you think that the media, media can come together to help Jamaican media come together to, to help shift this transformation? Well, it, with it, over it, 30, it, it, 30 radio stations here, everybody, everybody vying for, do you think collaboration is key? Collaboration is a good thing, and, and if the media were to collaborate, that would set a good example as to what can be done mm -hmm. when we come together. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it could be a cue without even, it could be a, a tacit kind of message, mm -hmm. you know, uh, something that you imply. Yeah. But um, yes, it is going to require the kind, and this is why an organization like the PSOJ is so critical in this. Important, yeah. Because what you have to do is to have an agency that is going to bring all of these elements together, mm -hmm. an agency with credibility yeah uh, an agency that is non-governmental really yeah. mm -hmm. because you know sometimes people uh, attach motives to government yeah. initiatives. yes yes so yes, yes. so if it can be led by the PSOJ mm -hmm. obviously ha it will have to have some input from the government mm -hmm. and as we say the police force yeah it is going to be what are the confidential the confidence building measures mm -hmm. that the police will take mm -hmm. and if if we can have these confidence building messages mm -hmm and measures then that will help when the media steps in because the media will be the carrier of these positive images and messages well, that, we, we, we that we're talking about in influencing well we we right here at the bridge and Irish jam radio we're planting that seed we want to see collaboration because again this is a community this is an, uh, an everybody initiative this is not just psoj this is not just jcf this is not just the ngos this is everybody's issue everybody's problem yours mine's the the suit mine this is all of our issues and that's how we have to see it and that's exactly how we have so to see it. so part of what part of what the media will have to do is to teach people how to own this this project so part of the messaging must be to let each individual in jamaica know that it's not a psoj project mm -hmm. it no. is a Clyde McKenzie, yeah. a Cynthia Shea Clark, yeah. a Judith Bodley project. Yeah, it is. It is, it is, it is, it is something project, yeah. that affects everybody because yeah. this is where we live. Yes. And if we don't realize this and take it back, yes. we're going to be in trouble. Big trouble. We're broadcasting live from uh, Project Star Launch right here in Kingston, Jamaica, joined by Mr. Clyde McKenzie. We're also broadcasting in New York, New Jersey, Connecticut on Irie Jam Radio. We are going to jump to a quick break. More when we come back. The Bridge 99FM, keeping the Caribbean connected.